All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get this live stream started and play a little bit of Pharaoh, a new era. All right, welcome, welcome, everybody. Looks like we got the live stream started. We are ready to play some new games. Yes, it's exciting. This is a brand new game. Just came out a couple of days ago. It's called Pharaoh, Pharaoh A New Era. And it is a remake of an older game that I used to play as a kid. So I've been really hyped about this. Some of you might remember my live stream series that I did last year where I played the old game, which was the original version. It wasn't the best quality. Uh, so I didn't finish that series. It was anyway. Um, now we got the new game. They finally released the new game. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. There is an intro and it's, uh, it's a really good, like a video, uh, you know, that plays when you first open the game and I did want to play it, uh, so everybody can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and play that right now. I'm just going to close the software and reopen it and then we'll watch the video play and, uh, it'll give you guys kind of an idea of the art direction and sort of the whole premise and the theme of the game so anyway i'm gonna close it out i'm gonna restart it back up and uh, i'm gonna hide my camera and then we'll watch the intro once it loads here All right, you guys, we have entered the land of the Pharaoh. And I am the Pharaoh Jono. <laughs> you know, I had to bust out the old Pharaoh costume. You guys remember? Okay, not everybody watched, but I did do the, I played the old Pharaoh game and I bought a Pharaoh costume because I thought, you know, like I'm a live streamer. I'll be so entertaining. I'll wear the Pharaoh costume. Anyway, I'm not gonna, I decided I'm not gonna do that for this series. We're just gonna play it cool, but I had to bust out the hat for a little bit of comedic timing there because obviously, <laughs> look, it's got, the, it's got the snake, it's got the snake, it's got the cobra. Okay, 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 we can bust out, we can bust out the hat again. It's actually kind of itchy. All that gold stuff is like, uh, it's kind of itchy, but anyway, I'm gonna wear this hat right here just like I normally do. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay, so I haven't played the game at all. I'm loving how all the new menus are all like super clean. Like, look at this, you guys. When you click around, look, look, look. Ah, oh, it's just, it's a hundred million times better. I'm actually playing in 2560 by 1440, which won't mean that much to most people. Uh, and it's a it's 60 frame rate, by the way, which is really nice. That that's just an extra bonus. But uh, most people are probably playing 1920-1080, and my stream is 1920-1080, but on my monitor in front of me right here is 2560. Anyway, it, it's a little detail. Most people won't care. But um, I, I do have a, I have a big, gigantic, like, wide, like, 5,000 wide monitor, 
and I tried to play the game on the 5,000 wide, you know, and it, it didn't work. It didn't work. I tried to play, it, it just gives black bars on the side, so. I don't know if the actual game, once we get started, will be able to take up my entire monitor because not every, but not every single game can take up the entire monitor. So, I'm still curious once we get in there. Okay, okay. I'm gonna be Jono Sorkon just like I was last time. It used to, it used to offer you like Egyptian sounding names. Um, I like this golden hair dude. Is it a lady though? I think that's a lady. I still like that golden hair. Uh, we're gonna go with the golden hair. Let's go. John No Sorkan. I I don't know. It recommended that name last time when I was playing the game. Uh, the original game would recommend you Egyptian sounding names. And this one didn't, so I kind of do miss that. Maybe... Maybe there's a reason why. Hmm. Maybe there's a reason why. I'll just leave it at that. Maybe they didn't want to offer Egyptian sounding names anymore. I don't know. Okay, so we are going to go to campaign. We're going to relive 4,000 years of ancient Egyptian history. Let's go. And I just want to I just want to pause and admire the graphics here for a second. This is so good. They got the ship going by in the background. I mean, if you I guess nobody played the original. I'm doing a poll right now in my chat and 100% of the people who have voted in the poll said they have not played the original, which of course doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me one bit. But if you guys watched my live stream series of the original, which I did last year, um, it just, it looks so different. It looks so different. Okay, I'm excited. We're entering Nubbed. Your family begins the pre-dynastic period, leading a small band of nomads through their discovery of the arts of civilization. Your leadership helps to set Egypt on its course to eventual greatness. Oh, you, you know I gotta get out my pharaoh hat for this one. I am the pharaoh of Nubt. Let's go. <laughs> I am the pharaoh. Make it so. <laughs> okay, Nubt is the original town where you start in the original Pharaoh game. And we're not Pharaoh yet because Pharaohs don't exist. This is pre-dynastic, which means that it's before the dynastic Egyptians. Now, if you guys don't know a lot of Egyptian history, basically, you can see at the top, it says 3,500 BC to 3,050 BC. So it's about a 500-year period. You know, and humans live like we live, you know, what, 70, 90, 100 years, you know, in some cases. So that's like five, you know, 100 year period. It's like five generations, you know, more. It's probably more generations than that. But anyway, this is before this is like people who are basically just figured out how to make pottery. You know, they're still not They're They're still not building like pyramids. They're not building huge monumental stuff. They just figured out farming. They just figured out pottery. And they're like, let's go. Let's build some population. So anyway, this is really far back. We're still thousands of years before the pyramid builders. Okay? Just so you know, your boy's got, your, your boy's got history chops. Okay, a village is born. A village is born. Small landscape. These are my wind conditions, okay? And actually, this this is... This is a little bit, the way that they've worded this is lackluster. It could be better. I need to get six meager shanties, six level three. I don't even know what level three is, but six meager shanties is what we need to get. And that's basically like the most basic level of house. So I just need to get six really basic level houses. Until you've reached the last level of housing, trade will bring more debits in than taxes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's basically saying that trade will make you more money than taxes will. And that's true. Welcome to ancient Welcome Egypt. Welcome to ancient Egypt, oh, land of the pharaohs. Let's go. Here you'll participate in the history of one of the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen. In an epic story that I'm really, spans more I'm really than glad it's reading it. centuries and two dozen I don't generations. Want to read it. <laughs> you must lead one family, generation by generation, 
from its earliest beginnings in Egyptian prehistory through the dawn of civilization to the establishment of a unique and powerful empire and beyond. Yeah. Our story begins oh, more than 5,000 years ago <laughs> along the banks of the Nile River in an area known as Nupt. <clears throat> Here, a small confederacy of clans struggles to eke out an existence in the harsh environment. Clans. With you at its head, your family leads this small settlement. Clans. Small settlement. <clears throat> okay. The mission is lost if your debt rises up to negative 5,000 debits, which shouldn't happen because this is really, really, really easy. Okay, so the game teaches you how to play it as you get started. So a lot of the early missions are tutorial. That's pretty standard for any video game. This game came out in the 90s, you guys. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. I could be wrong, but pretty sure. 90s. Anyway, I'm really excited to play this. Uh, first thing we need in the village is houses, provide settlers with suitable places to live, and a network of roads. Build areas of housing, and you'll see people move in. Okay, so we do have... Okay, so if I go to the edge of the screen... Can you guys see my cursor? Yeah, you can. If I go to the edge of the screen, it moves it. And there should be... Okay, this is my housing. Oh, dear. Now, why is it telling me to build here? I don't know. I can't quite get to, I can't quite move the bottom. Okay. You can see the people coming in. So notifications become important later in the game. What I'm looking for is like my map. Cause I can't like move, I can't move to the, I can't move down. I can move right and I can move left and I can move up, but I can't move down. And I'm like, where's the, there's gotta be a map somewhere. There used to be a map. I guess I can just zoom out. Maybe I can't move down cause there's no down to go. No, there is. I like that when you zoom in, the graphics are still really good. Because it wasn't like that in the old game. Okay, it seems to want me to build houses right here. It says right click to quick construction mode. It's pretty much like telling me what it wants me to build. The Kingdom Road. The path by which immigrants reach your city is known as the Kingdom Road. Migrants always need free passage from the kingdom road to the city's housing area if you isolate a neighborhood from this vital link to the outside world the homes will simply disappear okay so i had to connect it told me to build houses here but also to build them a road so that's interesting it's a little bit different tutorial than the than the original games And people just kind of show up off the edge of the map, which which is normal. It says here, repair your mistake, undo your last action. What is repair your mistakes? See, I don't know what that means. So one of the main objectives in the game is to get like a gigantic population. And what you do is you provide different services and amenities to your residents and then they'll upgrade their housing so it's teaching me how to give them the most basic level upgrade which is water and because we're in the pre-dynastic time period we only have wells so we're gonna build these guys a well and it has instructed me where they will want their well and you can see the houses are upgrading 
as we put in the wells. And you can see I can't put in a well because there's not green. So this is like desert area. So it's not green enough to put in a well. So I may have to get rid of some of these houses. Because they're not close enough to where I can put a well. I still don't have a map. Right click to go back to the category selection. And right click again to quit the construction mode. Okay. If you'd rather have all the subcategories already open when you select when you select a category, you can choose to do so in the options. Okay. Oh good, they're gonna give me food now. So this is for hunting. You have food gatherers, and then you have food storage, and then you have the bazaar who goes to the food storage, collects the food and then walks around and distributes it to your houses. This is actually a really important mechanic, so. This part, we gotta get it right. You wanna have your bazaar close enough to your storage, your granary storage, that they don't have to walk so far. See this long, long, long walk right here? That's actually a really long walk. And see this long walk right here? You want them to be like right next to each other. And then this, you know, close to other granaries as well. So they basically told me where I should pretty much build stuff. Which is interesting. So workforce access, this is something that they, they never explained in the original game. The worker will walk out of here, find some houses, and then once it finds the houses, then the worker will work for this area. And then they'll go out and start doing their work. And then this worker will carry food you know, between these two. Some of this stuff they didn't explain in the original game. I still can't move down. This is so weird. Okay, so then we need... Wait. Okay. We need a granary. It says to put the granary here, but I'm like, mm. Yeah, I guess we will. Okay, we're just gonna evict those guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. We gotta. This is teaching us how the bazaar gets its food from the greenery and then distributes it around to the people. So far, this is going well. I wasn't sure how the game would play. Walkers and return points. So it's saying where the walker is going to exit and then enter, which they never told you this in the original game either. And basically saying like, see how this one, they have the same entry and exit point. And you might wanna essentially control that. That's interesting, that wasn't part of the original game where you could just control their entry points. Distributors, whether they distribute goods or services to houses, roam the roads of your city for a time and then come back to their building. During their walk, when they reach a crossroad, they can take either direction. To avoid distributors getting lost where you don't want them to go, don't build a road network with too many intersectors. Yeah, intersectors, exactly. They, they didn't tell you that in the original game, which is interesting. What I need is some beautification. And you also don't want to put houses right next to ugly buildings because they won't upgrade. So we're going to evict those people and put like a statue or something nice there. They're also giving us access to roadblocks like earlier in the game, which is nice. So like, for example, I can just block off and my distributors won't go down this road, which goes nowhere, and I'm not gonna build anything there. But certain people can pass the roadblock, like you saw those guys walk past it because they're workers, but it's just for, for like walkers and distributors. So you can see my granaries getting filled up with food. Oh, it's telling me to put in more roadblocks, so we'll put in 
it says to put one right there. Okay, fire and collapse. These are like disasters. You can have disasters in the game and you want to avoid those. The firemen will basically walk around and make sure that everybody has low risk of fire. And the same thing with the architect. He'll walk around and make sure buildings don't collapse. So... Some of this stuff is grouped in together when it didn't used to be grouped in together and it's kind of confusing. Okay, so we're gonna put a firehouse here and a firehouse here and that should have us covered. And then I usually put my firehouse and my architect's posts with each other. And I think what they just gave me is well access, or sorry, water supply access, which is what they did. So water supply, they're gonna walk around, carry water. I'm gonna keep governing just a little bit because we're gonna make a nice, gigantic population, but we have won, at this point we have won. Um, I didn't even spend all my money or do everything there is to do. So we're gonna govern just a little bit longer in Nupt and uh, Keep it going. So let's build some more housing in Nubbed. It looks like this is the erase button. It's a little bit hard to move the map, I gotta admit. We'll govern. I don't know how much longer it'll let me govern in Nubbed. But we'll toss out some, uh, so this is stock and distribution. So you can see how the cities start to come together. I feel like it's really hard to move the map though. We'll put a granary all the way up here. And a few hunting lodges so these guys have jobs. All right, there we go get them a nice big population going nice big population that's what we want I'm satisfied with the city <laughs> that's great I hope I'm credited for the great condition of this city. It had me on pause for a second. That was weird. Okay, we should see a big influx of population come in. We'll toss another hunting lodge. So we got three on each side. They haven't given me access to everything yet because I swear there should be like a little mini map that helps me navigate. Maybe they didn't include the mini map. I don't know. Okay, how you guys doing this weekend? Hopefully everybody's having a good weekend so far.
Okay, one good thing is you can speed up the city. So you can see I'm making everything go faster now. So all these places should get jobs. They should all go get their food. And they should all upgrade. Oh, I think a cloud's going over. Check this out, we got clouds. You can, you can see up here the time is passing by. So May, June. You'll also notice the wells dried up because people aren't using them because they have clean water access here. So they're not using it. You used to be able to right click on certain buildings and check on their, oh, you left click it now. Okay, so this guy has got 300 meat and you can tell it what kind of stuff you want to accept. It also tells you the fire risk, the collapse risk. Okay, interesting. So this guy's got 730 game meat. That's the bazaar. The bazaar has more game meat than the granary right now. And then they're gonna go and distribute that. And it's currently buying, but you can tell it not to buy certain stuff too if you don't want it to have certain, certain stuff. So you can see my game meat is stocking up here. Every one of these little game meats inside here, every one of these little things can hold 400. So when it gets totally full, 400 times 800 is like, it's like 3,200 or something like that. Yeah, you can see it's filling up. This one's almost full, 2,800. I think it does fill up at 3,200. And once they get full, then they'll just hold tight, they're full, you know? And these guys have got plenty of of food so they'll go and just pick up more you can see the bizarre lady she'll go pick up more and then sometimes what you need is another granary because you can see I'm filling up my granaries or if you notice you're getting just way too much food you can start deleting the the guys producing the food and let them go do other jobs but in this limited scenario there's no other jobs. They're not going to give us all the jobs that are available. So what I don't know... Welcome to... I want to know how do I move on? Ooh, world map. Okay, they haven't given me world map yet. Well, you can see my meager houses. I don't know how to move on now. I'm done with the city. <laughs> These are as upgraded as they're going to get, and we got a lot of them. Although the city does keep on getting new inhabitants. You just uploaded a video. If it's 2 p.m., then yeah, I, I made my new upload time 2 p.m. And it is 2 p.m. Okay, these guys are basically maxed on food, so that's cool. I guess we'll go back to the menu. I don't know. I'm kind of confused on how we... Uh... Oh, there we go. I was like, how do I advance? <laughs> okay, we'll go to the next pre-dynastic city. Tennis. The dawn of civilization. I need to get one ordinary cottage. One level six house. We'll move on to the next one, you guys. Try to sell goods like papyrus and linen. They have low 
Hmm, I didn't quite read that whole thing. After many years and the passing of a generation, your family has resettled in the area of Inis in Upper Egypt. Here, a small band of local rulers is attempting to extend its influence over Lower Egypt and all lands along the River Nile oh, and yeah. to unite this Don't realm forget, under its Pharaoh. own house with one supreme leader. Pharaoh Jana Sorkan. Establishing Finis as a thriving city like nothing ever seen before will prove the worthiness of the Kenite Confederacy and help them gain supremacy over Lower Egypt and the other factions vying for power. In time, this will mean providing the population with entertainment and building wonderful temples to worship the region's patron deity. To build a city this grand yes. will require a substantial supply of cash. You'll find rich deposits of gold ore in Finis, and yes. harvesting them should I am be Pharaoh. your first priority. Okay. Let's get started. We're still in pre-dynastic Egypt. This is really just tutorial stuff. These ones go pretty fast. So we're going to fly through these. And then on like future episodes, I'll spend like a whole episode just doing one city. Because they really get pretty complicated. But right now, they're just like loading you up with information. And I already know all this stuff. But it is nice to read it because they do tell you some stuff they didn't tell you originally. Lay down your houses. Provide people with fresh water. Same way you did in Nubt. Try to be relatively close to the ore-bearing rocks in the northwest of the camp. You're going to need to mine them. Clear trees with the destroy button. These won't grow back. In future missions, you'll have to make sure you won't need them before getting rid of them. That's important because in the original game, they wouldn't exactly tell you, like, oh, you could just accidentally delete all the trees. And guess what? Now you can't get wood that you need to complete the mission, so you just failed the mission, you know? What I don't get is why can't I move the camera down? Is it because my... I don't know. When I get my mouse close to it, it just doesn't do anything. So there's gold over here. You can see it. I just feel like I should be able to move down, and I can't. And it won't let me drag... Well, while I try to figure it out, I should lay some houses down. Okay, that shouldn't change anything for you guys. Okay, there we go. You know, at least I can move down now. It's not as big on my screen as it was, which is kind of a bummer, but at least I can move down. There's something. Oh, I wonder if I can do keyboard. Oh, it'd be nice if the keyboard would do it. I like to go big with my housing. Okay, speed management and key binding. You might feel the need to speed things up a bit. I actually do feel the need to slow things down a bit. Now, what about this key binding? It said something about key binding. Yeah, key binding. Toggle grid. Oh, yeah, camera up. 
Needs to be up arrow. Yes. Camera left. Needs to be left arrow. Yes. Camera down. Needs to be down arrow. Please. Camera right. Needs to be right arrow. Let's go. Okay. Space is paused. That's nice. Okay. Let's confirm this. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, key binding, key binding. See, this is why... I always wonder, you know, like, if I stream this and nobody watches, you know, was it worth it to stream it? But if there's one person who watches and they realize that you can do key bindings because they watched, that's going to be valuable to them. So, you know, I just, I just tell myself, maybe somebody somewhere out there is getting some value from this. And I hope they drop, I hope they drop me a nice comment. Okay, now we don't have a source of food. These boys are going to need to get some hunting lodges going. And we're going to need some granaries. And honestly, you want to keep your granaries decently far away from your houses because they don't like them. Okay, we can go to 1x speed. Okay. Now I know there's certain overlays. Oh, I can't use the overlays. Because you can overlay to see, like, what's my fire risk, and it'll tell you if you have areas that are in high risk of fire. And that can actually be really handy. We're going to need some mining later. And that's all going to take place over here. And I think what I'm going to do is build a little population center. But I'm not sure how I want to get to them exactly. I'm not sure how far off the Kingdom Road I want to go and where I want to put my population centers. I think I'll probably put them right through here. And then we'll put the population over here. Because they need to have water. So I gotta be able to get them water. And then we also do not want them to burn down. Or fall down. So we'll have those there just waiting. And then what you can do is just add in some extra people, even though they might not be the happiest in that location. You can always use more people. And, um, where's my roadblock? I forgot, where did the roadblock go? Oh, here it is. We'll just roadblock them right there since we don't want them going that way. Not yet, anyway. I just realized my game is, like, super, super loud. I meant to turn that down earlier. Sorry about that. Oh, managing a treasury. Each structure you place costs debons. That's your money, debons. Not counting what you will spend to pay the workers salaries. One way to make back that money is to mine gold. Place at least two gold miners near veins of ore so you can start production of this precious metal. Make sure you, they have access to the workforce and don't forget to protect them against collapse risk. So it says make sure they have access to the workforce. That's why I built all these people over here. That's why I put these people right here because I knew I was going to be going in 
to do some gold mining. The fact that I can put so many gold mines is actually pretty, pretty cool. And then what we want to make sure we do is protect them against fire and collapse. Okay, and here's my village palace. The village palace needs to be close enough to the gold miners that it can actually... The gold miners have to walk from here. Here, I'll show you guys because he's about complete. See, look, the gold miner is going to walk from right here all the way over to my village palace and deposit the gold in my village palace. And then watch, my gold right here is going to go up. See, it just went up by 100 and now they're giving me crime, which means I need to have a police station. So we're going to add a police station to my list of things that I build. Okay. Police station for these guys. Who's texting me? Oh, and they're going to tell me overlays too, so I can see if there's crime or whatnot. Okay, I need to build a police station before these guys get out of control. And start whiling. Okay, a couple of police stations. We got gold coming in, so you can see my income is going up because you don't want to go into debt. If you go into debt, you get in trouble. And pretty soon we'll have religion and entertainment. And I'm going to need to build a little bit of entertainment for these guys. We got money coming in. Uh, let's go check my notifications because something came up, but I missed it. Overlays. We're going to open the overlay menu. Okay, so this is my water overlay. How's this have good water? This one has not so good water because the water guy is walking this direction. So I would want my water to be down here, but that's okay. They'll be all right. Okay, so we got entertainment, but nobody has an entertainment, any entertainment yet. We got education, we got health. Nobody has health yet. We got religion, we got taxation and risks. So this is my, this is my malaria risk. This is my crime risk. And you can see it highlights the police building. And then when it's malaria, it doesn't highlight the police building. It would highlight the health buildings, which we're going to put those in as well. Services, physician right here. That's new. So we're going to drop him in there. And we're going to drop one Oh, and now we got religion. So that'll be important. We'll put in one position and see how we do with that. And then I gotta turn off the overlays. Okay. Now we finally got religion. So we have shrines and we have temples. So we're gonna need a lot of temples. The gods really like... The gods really like to get worshipped. They're all about it. And these guys are going to want entertainment soon, and I'm going to need this little corner patch right here. So we'll just go ahead and open that up. Okay, we got money coming in. No real issues. I'm going to open up some new houses, but people might not like them because they're not really in the best location. And also, you want to build shrines. Uh, shrines make your gods happy. Also, I think what I'm going to do is actually delete some of these houses. 
and put in my festival square here. Because that'll make this area a little bit better. This is talking about the overseers. Which they just gave me access to the overseers now. This is a way you can manage stuff in your city. It's actually kind of intense, but it helps you. And what we need to do is order a festival. We need to order a lavish festival to Bast. Usually you have more than one god and you have a patron god. And it tells you their current mood, which is apathetic. But we're going to hold a festival. We're going to build a bunch of shrines. And it's going to make the god no longer be apathetic. It's going to be so pleased with us. And we'll build another temple as well. Okay. So we're just building all kinds of stuff here. I am going to look at my health overlay. I can't tell if these guys are good. What's what's my health? They, the inhabitants of this house are in excellent health. It says right here. So pink is good? Okay, now we have entertainment. And I know how entertainment works, so I'm not gonna... Oh, a blessing from Bast. Blessed us with bounty of food and goods. That's good. So if you go and look at the bazaars, you'll see that they are that they got a ton of food in them now. So she she's providing real world benefits. Okay, so we now have entertainment, which means which means we need a juggler school, which we can just put out here kind of in the middle of nowhere. And that's fine. A couple of juggler schools and we'll put in a booth. The booth is a place where the jugglers can actually do what they're going to do. All right, we beat the mission, you guys. We beat the mission. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep governing this one. This was really just like the basics. You got to build your, your income source, whether that be trade, whether that be mining gold. Usually it's trade, but sometimes you get lucky and they give you gold mines. So this was a really simple mission where they're just kind of giving us the the very very basics. You know, I think my I think I bought my camera last night and changed it. Um I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. Okay, there we go. I bumped it last night and I I didn't quite know. Okay, let's go to the next mission because I was wondering what that experience is like since I continued governing on the last one. It looks like it just takes you to the map, which is pretty much the same experience. So if I did want to keep governing, it doesn't take away any cutscenes or anything like that from what I can tell. Uh, this city is called Perwajit. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, this is up near the Nile River Delta. We're still in the pre-dynastic period, so people haven't developed like high culture, monuments, all that stuff. But we are getting into little bit of trade so they may have us trade this one we'll see and you can see here it says monuments normally under the wind conditions there will be a monument we'll build a huge monument like a pyramid but we're still in the pre-dynastic period so they're not building pyramids yet we're going from earliest Egyptian history all the way up to the newest so population of 600 got to get a modest homestead and it's called the Precarious Nile. They may actually let us start farming in this one. Because that's a major form of food production. Gotta love the graphics. Alright. The Thinite nobles still struggle to unite the lands of the Nile under one supreme ruler. To aid them in their cause, it is hoped that you oh, yeah. endeavor to establish a thriving community at Fairwatchet in the humid Delta region of Lower Egypt. <laughs> thus I am Pharaoh Jono. Throughout the length of the sacred river, to support a population larger than that of a village, you must learn to use agriculture. I am Pharaoh. 
Egyptian crops have begun to exploit the rich fertile soil deposited by the annual inundation of the Nile River for growing crops. The Nile can be hazardous, however. Many dangers lurk along its banks and in its waters, such as deadly crocodiles, hippopotamuses, and malaria carrying mosquitoes. Okay. So we can't get negative 5,000 debt. We'll lose if we get negative 5,000 debt. Okay. I'm not quite the pharaoh yet. Okay, floodplains and farming. This is really important, you guys. We got work camps. Work camps are going to get workers. And then they're going to walk out to your fields. You have to place your fields. You're going to... I'll show you guys all that. Place your fields. Get your workers. Have them go to the work camps. And then they'll harvest at the end of the season. And they'll drop it all off at your greenery. Okay. So this isn't too bad. Let's take a look at where my road goes. They haven't given us water crossings yet. I don't know if they will. And I do believe that we're going to put our population center right down the middle. So what we'll do is go population. Boom. All right. <clears throat> and what we'll do is take this road into the field. And we'll put down our population. There we go. Boom. All right. So the crazy thing about getting started is your people need so much stuff to get started. Like they need so much stuff. And it's actually crazy how much they need. So when you first get started, like, you're just like scrambling to get stuff down in time before it all starts falling apart. <clears throat> and so we need a village palace. And sometimes it's not abundantly obvious where you should put your village palace. Sometimes can't quite figure that out. Okay, so in this one we have Shrine to Osiris. So it looks like Osiris is our patron god. And we've only got Osiris. And my man's is painted blue. It's worth noting. So we do need a couple of work camps. And we need to set up our fig farms and we got to get started farming okay so they're gonna need road okay so that's what we do there now you usually want to put a roadblock into the farms and a roadblock anywhere that you don't want people going, so. And I still don't have enough. What I need is fire. Okay. Fire architect. And then somewhere over here we need fire. Architect. Police. And you got to be careful when you first start building your city because you can just flat run out of money like so fast. Because you want to go and put everything in. But, you know, you don't necessarily need everything when you first get started. Oh, 
Oh, see, I haven't even built certain stuff yet. So what we'll do... Right here, I'll just really random, like, build my festival square. And then what we'll do is we'll... Oh, well, I was going to block it off, but I didn't quite space it right, but that's okay. Okay, we want to hold a new festival, lavish festival. So far, we've got farms going. We need granaries. So we'll get those granaries built. And sometimes you get so much food that they overfill your granaries. All right, gotta make sure we get everything tip top. Make sure these guys have workers. Okay, overseer of the workers is like the most important. I don't know how to read this. This is so different than it used to be. I do not know how to read that. It's so weird. The overseer of the workers is the most important overseer. I think I'm ordering them by importance, so... Administration gets the first workers, food and farming gets the next workers, then religion, then hygiene. But yeah, I'm not sure. I want to make sure that everybody's got as many workers as they need. And silly me, I knew I was forgetting something. I forgot to put in water. health We always got to have a festival going. You want to run many festivals. Okay, I've been running on half speed this whole time. I just realized we should probably run a little bit faster. Okay, so here comes all my food workers. 
And I'm going to see how much they actually deposit into my granaries. And that tells me how many more granaries I need. So you can see the granaries are filling up. I was able to fill one granary, but not more than that. So that's interesting. Now what we can do is build more farms. Ooh, malaria. Okay, so they've given me access to the apothecary now. So I don't want to miss out on that and then get malaria because my people will get sick. You can see the Nile came in and flooded all my planes, right? And it flooded over here too, so I can't even do the building I wanted to do because they flooded me out. We got our wild hippopotamuses over here. Oh yeah, the biggest, baddest, meanest mammal out there. All right, good to know, good to know. In the meantime, I can build some some work camps, which I'm gonna need, so we'll get these going. Okay, actually, I think what I need... No, undo that. We'll put that back. Um, what I may end up doing is putting a couple of granaries over here. Just in case we get full up, because I'm going to build a whole bunch of farms, and I want them to have a place to go. Okay, I'm still trying to remember where everything is. Okay, it says employees needed. So if we go to my overseer of the workers, I'm trying to figure out how to read this. My administration has workers. My food and farming has workers. Religion has workers. Hygiene has workers. And then everybody else is just splitting the remaining workers evenly. And what we need is more workers. So what we'll do is we'll start to build out a second population center. I think I forgot to build bazaars. Did I forget to build bazaars? I did. I totally forgot to build bazaars. Okay, so there's two bazaars. Okay, they just gave me industry. What did they give me? Clay pit and pottery. Okay, we'll, we'll do a little bit of this. We'll run just a little bit of industry. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, once you get... Once you get industry... You want to do it because it can be a way to make money. build up some more farms too. I am getting low on money.
Okay, we're gonna get some I crazy. We're gonna get some building going. And we need to build a lot more houses. So it's about to go down. Oh dear, I ran out of money. You're not supposed to do that. I got greedy. Ran myself out of money. But if you run out of money, they actually give you a little bit. So that's good. Because you can see all the stuff I got to build. I got to build like one of every single one of these. Okay, I'm just burning through money here. We don't really have any income. Although my houses are upgrading, so that's good. That'll increase my um, population naturally. Okay, they finally gave me beautification. That's one of the best parts of this game. Now I can start to build, like, statue. Oh, man, this is cool. They've also got bigger statues. Nice. That's, like, the coolest part of this game because we can build gardens... It does kind of eat your money up, but it makes your city just, like, flourish. Like, you can see it upgrades the houses almost immediately. My granaries are pretty full. You can see the Nile came in. All my people dumped their food. I'm not getting more food than my granaries can hold, so that's good. Uh, here's the granary lady. She's actually getting her food. She's got all the all the little walkers that were behind her and now she's gonna go and distribute food and as she distributes food these houses are gonna upgrade. So she's doing her thing. Not sure how far she can actually walk. I may need another bazaar over here to keep these guys fed up but yeah you can see they haven't really given me any they haven't really given me any money I don't have a source of income so what I'm trying to do is get my houses upgraded uh, shout out to sniper chicken this game oh good we beat it I was like we gotta beat it soon enough uh, this game is a city building game that was released in like the 1990s and they remade it and a bunch of people like me who played the original have been waiting for the remake and uh, very excited about it and it's basically just a city building game playing through ancient Egyptian history which I also happen to love ancient Egyptian history so okay you guys we finally made it out of the pre-dynastic period and we're now in the archaic period they just kind of sprung that on us we're no longer in the pre-dynastic, so we're basically the tutorial's over. Although it's not really, they're still going to have more tutorial items. During the archaic period, the villages that emerged from the pre-dynastic period gradually unite to form the great kingdom of Egypt. 
The young civilization founds a capital, secures its borders, masters the water, and builds its first monumental tombs. So we are going to start building tombs at Nekin. This is about 3000 BC, I believe. This is the first pharaoh. Oh, let's go. Let's go. The first pharaoh. I am finally a pharaoh in the archaic period. Let's go. All right. I am pharaoh. So we need to get a population of a thousand and ten modest apartments. So we'll be working on that. I am pharaoh. I am Pharaoh. Okay, I like that it reads this. As the people who live along the Nile still struggle to survive in this harsh environment, a local king named Narmer has risen to power. Though Narmer has dominion over much of this land, full unification of the twin kingdoms has yet to be achieved. In commemoration of his accession, Narmer wishes your family to establish and govern a new city at Nekhan. This city will have temples to many of the gods of Egypt and numerous places of entertainment. Make it so. <laughs> okay, we can't get negative 5,000 Devons. Although if you mess up and you run out of money, they will give you a little bit more. And we have multiple gods. Okay, multiple gods. So we got to be careful and keep them all happy because they're quite jealous. All right. I am Pharaoh. I always slow it down to half speed at the beginning because it can just be really challenging when the time is just getting eaten up, you know, super fast. Okay, it's always good when you first start a level to see what they actually give you. So in this in this one we have clay pits. We're going to have brewers at some point. We have three different gods, which means we're it's going to cost us a lot of money to build all those temples. We're going to get upgraded um, entertainment options. All we can make is pottery. Our food options are going to be farming again because we have work camps. So we'll be farming the Nile. And that's it. So I don't see any money production. So unless they give us trade, we don't have the ability to produce any money. So this will be interesting. We're going to make just like an absolutely gigantic population and it's all going to go right across here. The funny thing is I remember all these missions from the original game. Like I fully remember them. I remember how to solve the basically it's a puzzle, you know, it, it's pretty much like a puzzle because it's like, how do I solve this? So the way you solve your farming is you put in your farms first and then you run your roads. Because then you know where your road needs to go. Oh, I can't get through. Okay, gonna roadblock these off. We're gonna... Grab ourselves some work camps. Ooh, village palace. Okay. Kind of interesting. I'm not really sure where I want to put the village palace, you know.
Okay, we're gonna have to do religion. And the most important thing to know... Who is our patron god? Because you want to have more temples for your patron god. Who is our patron god? Overseers. I think our patron god is raw because it has this like marker going around it with the little eye on it. It tells you how many shrines you have, how many temples you have, and how many <clears throat> complexes you have, which we haven't got to complexes yet. Okay, so we're going to need temple to raw times two. Okay, and then we need one temple to Osiris, one temple to Bast. And what that does is it guarantees that we have more temples to Ra. All right. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm not going to wear the hat the whole time. I'm just doing it in between missions because it's funny. <clears throat> okay, now I need to put in basic services. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, see these guys right here? They have food. He can't take his supplies any further because no one's available to unload them. Okay, that's not good. That means I forgot to build granaries. And storage yards. Oops. Okay, my city's already becoming a mess. I can put in clay pits, but I'm not sure exactly where I want to put them. No, my boys are drowning. Okay, we need a festival to Ra. Let's go see my overseers, because I'm worried. Congenial, congenial, congenial. They're all happy. Ra's got two. Bast and Osiris have one. Looking good. I'm not quite low on money yet. Oh, you know what I haven't built? I haven't built any of my services. Wow. A small blessing. Bast threw us a festival, which makes all the other gods happy. And Ra did get happy by that, so he lifted our reputation, which we'll learn more about a little bit later.
Man, these people need so many services. I have to build like so many, so many buildings. Trying to get people food. That should probably do it. May not be the prettiest city. But I think everybody should at least be in good health. Give these guys some gardens so they got something to look forward to. We're going to hold a festival to Bost because Bost has the ability to throw us a, pro, uh, a party that appeases all the other gods. So we're looking good. We're looking good. I haven't done shrines. Like any shrines. So I need to make sure and get some shrines done. Okay. Let these guys get some food going. Apparently we've got more entertainment options. So now we're building musicians. It's a conservatory. A blessing from Osiris, a blessing from Bost, and a blessing from Ra. Very nice. What I need to have somewhere over here is a granary. So we're gonna have to build ourselves a granary. You want it far away from your people. They don't like to be near it. We'll build two, just in case. Now, one thing I haven't managed to do yet is find a place that I can build a conservatory. There we go. There's my first conservatory. Let 
And we'll build another one down here. I mean, I think I'm doing this right, because... I might have more workers than I need, actually. Okay, what I don't really have... Is any kind of industry? So we may need to put that in. Okay, a little bit of industry going in. It finally told me employees needed, which means I apparently am low on housing. But once we get this harvest, I think we'll finally be set for food because I built enough farms. But we have basically no income because they haven't given us a way to tax people yet. Courthouse, tax collector's office personal mansion, village palace. We don't have those things yet. They're gonna unlock them for us, but we must not have hit a certain condition yet. So we're gonna have to work a little bit harder and get the city up to speed. And I'm pretty much out of money. I'm also playing on half speed again, blast. We just got a blessing. All three of them blessed me up. Okay, let's speed it up just a little bit and get to harvest and then we'll see what happens. Because we're supposed to be building monuments at some point as well. These guys will harvest up the food. Oh, we ran out of money. Blast. Treasury ran out. They granted us additional funds, though. That's the thing. So we got to watch out. Now that we have this money, we got to watch out. Okay, looks like they're filling up my granaries. Everybody's on their way somewhere, so that's good. We want them all to head somewhere. Looks like they're going to fill up these granaries. Okay, now we can make a beer and barley farm, so we can take out... 
a couple of these and we can put in a different kind of farm which will be barley unfortunately it's all underwater from the inundation of the Nile so because we're able to do that we need to build breweries now so we'll take out a couple of these potters and put in breweries That'll make my people nice and happy. You can see my buildings are upgrading because they're getting plenty of goods. So they've got pottery, they've got grain. They're gonna want beer next. So we're gonna make some breweries so that they can get that good, good beer. I am gonna clear out all this so I can use it for my center of industry. Put in a few more brewers down here at the end. Move some things around so we're nice and safe. Alright, cool. Let's do some overlays. We'll do health. Everybody's looking healthy. We'll do uh, risk. No crime. No disease. No malaria. My buildings are not going to collapse. Okay, that's good. And nobody's gonna catch on fire. Everybody's green, so that's good. Nobody's gonna catch on fire. Okay, good. My houses are upgrading, so that'll increase my population. I need to get those couple of farms in. Get those barley farms in there. That should allow them to make some beer. Still doing pretty good on food. They're not running out. Because the bizarre lady, she's right here. She'll come and get the food. Little by little, she'll take it out. Now, I'm only ordering festivals to Bost because Bost can bless all the other gods and make them happy. So, we keep on blessing Bost and Bost, Bost keeps on blessing us back. So, that's good. Uh, you can see my houses are upgrading. These two houses right here are not upgrading. So what we're going to do is take out this juggler's booth and put in a conservatory. Okay. Let's go see if my gods are happy. Amiable, amiable, sympathetic. That means they're not in the best shape. So we're going to build some shrines. It's going to make them real happy. As long as there are two spaces from a road, then they'll work. And I try to build them evenly because people get a little bit upset. The gods will get upset if you if you give too many. So I've got four, I've got three, and I've got three. So I've always got one extra on my whatever my patron god is. And you can see now they're approving, approving, and congenial. So that means that what, what I just did made them happy. When they're amiable, it means they could go either way. It means I could go this way, I could go that way. So um, if they're amiable, that means you can just take one little action, build some shrines, and then they'll be happy. So that's good. Now, if I was Mr. Moneybags, then I would build a whole bunch of... I would build a whole bunch of, like, statues, like this statue right here. And gardens, I would build a whole bunch more gardens. I'll show you guys what the gardens look like when you upgrade them to a 3x3. Three three. 
And if you do a two by two, they also have different styles. So you can see once we get into this, it's going to be really good. We got statues, all that, all that good stuff. But for now, we got to wait. And also there's plazas you can put on the road. It's probably hard to see those, but... Yeah, you can plaza the road. Make it all nice. But you will just eat up your money if you do that. But once you plaza the road, your houses pretty much won't downgrade unless they lose something that they need. Okay, so it looks like I still got a little bit of food left. A little bit of food in each of my granaries. And these guys are getting close to harvest. So it means that my year worth of food from my last harvest lasted me until my next harvest. Which means my houses aren't going to downgrade. So that's good. Yes, to please Pharaoh Jono, you must hit the like button. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please do. Uh, so what I'm waiting on is my barley fields. So I need my barley fields. Let's take a look at these. All right, let's have a look at the barley fields. Uh, Pharaoh Jono is getting hungry for a snack, so I'll need a little snack too. Now, I see how they're cutting with their knives? That means that they're done, and now they're harvesting. And the interesting thing is, they didn't do the whole field. So it tells me that maybe they needed more workers or something? I'm not sure. Now we can watch the barley workers where they go. They're going to go off to the right. <clears throat> They're either going to go to the storage or straight to the brewers. We got two barley guys. They might go drop right at the brewer. Or they might go drop at the storage, and then the storage will take it to the brewer. And it looks like he has taken it to the brewer. You can see all the brewers just got stocked. And then the other barley guy, he took it to the storage. So now you can see we got barley in my storage. So the brewers will make beer. And then they'll go put it in the storage. And then the bizarre lady over here, she'll come get the beer. See how she's got zero? But she'll come get it. Once these guys finish production. All right, it was definitely snack time. Okay, there's our first beer right there. They're dropping in the beer. And then the bizarre lady's gonna come and get it. There she goes, she just picked it up right there. Make welcome additions to the bazaar. That was her. And she's gonna go drop that. And then you can see now that now that they got beer, my house is upgraded. Now they're going to let me get tax collectors, which I needed. Water crossings. Oh, we finished. <laughs> well, there we go. Victory is ours. No monuments yet. No monuments yet. Hmm. I guess we'll go next mission. Next mission is Men Nefer.
That was weird. I completed that last mission, but I didn't even get to build my governor's mansion or anything. Kind of weird, right? All right, let's play it. Okay, we gotta get one spacious apartment. Oh, well, let's listen. The twin kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt, and proclaimed himself pharaoh over all Egypt, as a sign of his absolute sovereignty and the establishment of this, the first dynasty of Egypt. Hor Aha has ordered the founding of an imposing capital at Men Nefer, from which he may govern this fledgling nation. Yeah. Because of your fledgling nation. Generations of faithful service to this Let's land, Pharaoh has chosen you to be the architect of this splendid city. Apparently, I'm not Pharaoh. I'm just a measly architect. Its citizens must enjoy a quality Bait and switch, much? Unknown in this land. To this end, you will eventually need to trade with other cities in the realm and to provide a higher standard of education for at least some of your citizens. You must also build a sacred mastaba tomb for the city's nobles. Hmm. All right. So we're building this time a sacred mastaba tomb. How many of you guys actually know what a mastaba is? We got to get... Certain wind conditions. These are more advanced wind conditions than before. We have to have a kingdom rating of 40, prosperity rating of 20, culture rating of 15, and a monument rating of 5, which we'll probably achieve by building this small mastaba. So here we go. The banks of the Nile. Not banks like where you put your money, but the riverbank. Begin by planning areas of housing and industry. By now you know what people want. So you can see here we got a little roundabout of a two by two houses, two by two houses, gardens in between the houses, all of our uh, buildings that the houses need around the edges. There's our courthouse right there, which we didn't get to build on the last one. All right, so let's slow it down. Let's zoom it out. And let's see what we got. We got reeds over here. Let's see what they're going to give us for industry this time. Reed gatherer. So we're going to have to put our reed gatherer somewhere near the reeds. Clay pit. So this time we're going to have reeds and papyrus, clay and pottery and brewery. Do we have farms of barley? Yes, we have farms of barley and chickpeas. So that's the food we're going to have. Whenever you start a mission, you want to see what they actually give you because they don't always give you everything. This time we've got a shrine to Ptah, a shrine to Osiris, and a shrine to Bast. We've also got monuments, which aren't fully unlocked yet. Okay, so now we know what we're what we're gonna be working with. Here's our scribal school. That'll be later. Uh, we've got courthouse, personal mansion, and village palace. We want to build those first. And it looks like this is gonna be our primary area basically here we'll do a big wrap around there we go okay so we'll start off with a village palace Trying to decide, do I want my people on the outside or want my people on the inside? I think I want my people on the outside. Okay. And I'm going to put my house right over here by the lake. Because you know your boys got to have that luxury living. And we're going to do a little bit of infill. Please, thank you. I like to put these in first because they're kind of like my roads, all blocked out. Because um, sometimes if you don't get them in, it's hard to get them in later. So I decided I'm going to put people along the outside. Okay. 
people along the outside. Okay, now temples are large. Sometimes it's hard to get the temples in, so I like to block those in first. It looks like Ptah is our patron deity. So we need temple to Ptah in both corners. Temple to Osiris. Temple to Bast. And that's like the minimum number of like temples that we could put in for the beginning. Now, anywhere that I've got a one space is where I want to try to put one space buildings. So usually I try to slot those in. Like, see here, I can't build a three space, so I'm going to have to build a one space. And that's fine, because we need a couple of one spaces. We're also going to need tax collectors. So we'll just put them in. And I'm not going to be going easy on these people. They're getting taxed. So we're going to have taxes at uh, all four corners. You about to get taxed, people. Oh, you like my hat? Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> I keep forgetting to take it off. Okay, police, fire, architect. And then we'll do shrine, shrine shrine and that should make them pretty happy hopefully okay and then we got to do police fire and architect over here I mean look how many buildings that I absolutely have to put in every time I do anything it's crazy Plus, I haven't even done water. And I haven't even done bazaars. Okay, that should be at least a decent start. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll lead in some industry. No. We'll lead some industry in that way. Because I'm going to need a little bit of industry. Okay. Okay, that leaves me a little bit of room. There's still so many things I haven't even put in. Okay, where's my, where is the Nile? Oh my goodness, I haven't even started farming. I haven't even started farming. Look at me go. I mean, this is gonna be rough. This is going to be rough. Cuz 
because I don't even have work camps yet. I didn't even build granaries. All right, granaries is a big deal. We have to build granaries. Granaries will eat up your money so fast. And nobody wants to live near them, so it gets... It can be a little frustrating trying to put them in because nobody wants to be by them. And I haven't even built my first farm yet. Look at me go. Okay, so we're going to have to build up our farms. Going to have to build up a little bit of industry. That's why I put in a couple of... That's why I put some inroads over here. Because once we start to think about some industry, I'm going to want a place to put all of them. And I don't want them to fall down. So I'll put my potters over here. Of course I ran out of money. I always knew I would. Put a storage yard here because it fits really nice. And then we'll put in a couple of brewers. And see if they ever get some barley. In fact, they can get some barley if I do it right. So let's go ahead and put in some fields. Put in a couple of barley fields. Okay, the maze that you have to create for your farms is the hardest part because there's like a most efficient way to do it. It's just really hard to actually figure out what that is. Okay, we're gonna need 
a lot of granaries to hold all this food. Might even want to put some granaries on the other side of town. Because sometimes it's easier to help them get their food if the Trying to figure out what's the best way that I could put this in. This way you can get a little bit of like production items like hidden in with your town so they have access to workers but they don't make the they don't make everybody not want to live there. Okay, I think I forgot to build something really important. <clears throat> I did. I forgot to build my festival square. And now I don't know exactly where I want it. I really shouldn't have done that. getting pretty low on money which is what I'm worried about I haven't really got a good source of income I just have taxes Okay, let's build a shrine and get these guys nice and happy. Oh, floodplains will harvest double. That's good. Floodplain, the, that means we'll get double harvest on the next harvest, which is good. We'll be really stocked up on food then. I still don't fully get how this works. It, hmm. That one's still kind of confusing me. Has all the workers it needs. Let's see if we get enough workers from just these two I've only got these two work buildings. I 
I think it's enough. They're just they're just moving out there so slow. I mean, I guess what I could do is evict these guys and put in another work one just so that it's a little bit more efficient because it's taking them forever to actually get all of the farms working. So that should fix that. They're going to harvest double, so I'm going to need to have enough granaries to hold all that. It's probably a good time to beef up my breweries. Oh no, I've gone into debt. I should have known better. Here, I can undo that last move and I won't be in debt in anymore. Okay, I'm basically broke. We still don't have access to the world map, which means we don't have access to any trade. It says I'm in debt, but I'm not. We'll speed it up until we get to harvest. Okay, looks like everybody's harvesting. I have to go clear across the city with these goods. I don't care if you have to walk all day. I'm the Pharaoh. Make it so. Okay, these guys. I'm trying to figure out why aren't these upgrading? What do they need? See how much they're putting into the granaries? These guys are like maximizing my granaries right now. And then once those are full, they'll come over and maximize this granary. I'm stock full of pottery, so that's good. I think the problem Let's see, this guy's got pottery. This guy's got pottery, so everybody's full up on pottery. Plenty pottery. Uh, looks like my food guys are just getting over here to drop off their food, so plenty food. Why are these guys not upgrading? This house cannot evolve as there is no entertainment to be found in the location. I may have forgot to build certain buildings.
I may have did a little oopsie. And forgot to build certain buildings. Okay, watch all these guys up. up. Oh, wow. See, the juggler just went right there. And the band just went right there. And now they're all upgrading. Watch them all upgrade as soon as I do that. Okay, I forgot to build um, entertainment options for these guys. But we are fully in debt. With very little option to get out of debt. These guys are eventually going to want to see a courthouse. Which is why I did leave myself just a little bit of wiggle room. Because... Some of these 3x3 three three buildings can really take up a lot of room. Don't have room for it over here. They're going to want access to a courthouse. Okay, education. Man, I'm trying to find room for a courthouse, but I don't have room for it. Okay, my reed gatherer is going to go right over there. And my scribal school... Go right over here. I may have to extend this road out this way so I can fit in my courthouse. I am so in debt. I have not done a great job here. I am very much in debt. But I did build a school. We are going to educate some of our people. And I might just build another school right here. Okay, get these guys going a proper school. We have reed gatherers, but I forgot we need to have papyrus makers. So we gotta let them make a little bit of papyrus as well. And anytime you have industry, you need to build A, uh, a storage yards. Very important. Storage yards. Okay, city's doing good. I'm still massively in debt. I'll probably finish this scenario in debt. But I think the city is doing good. I still can't even build my monument. It's crazy. We'll speed up the city so we can get my papyrus going. Once these guys have some papyrus. That'll be good. Um, 
Oh, good. Finally, introducing trade. Now that you have managed to educate some of your people, you might want to generate additional revenue by selling surplus papyrus to neighboring cities. Yes, I do. All right, so let's go. Finally. So one thing we have to do is open trade routes. And then we'll import and export. So... It's telling me which cities I can trade with and what they're willing to buy and what they'll sell and how much it costs to open a trade route with them and if it's a land trade route. Okay. So this guy doesn't buy anything. So I don't want to open a trade route with him because he doesn't buy anything. This one says 550 Debon to open a trade route. And it won't let me do it. It says I need to import bricks. Usually it will let you open a trade route. What am I missing? Is it because I'm in debt? Have I already failed because I'm in debt? It won't let me open the... I think I'm gonna fail the mission. I think we're about to fail. Defeat, yeah. Okay, I got a replay. That's the first one I've had to replay. All right. That was unfortunate. We suffered a, a striking loss. Okay, I think we can do this a better way. Okay, that's enough to get started.
it's tough because there's so many things that have to go in like right at the beginning. My one and only comment for like the last hour has been, you're wasting cropland, bro. <laughs> it's my one and only comment. Dang, I ran out of money again. Those granaries get you every time.
My list of job openings is huge, and I can't find any workers to fill the posts. Okay, I gotta save some money, cause... I need it for opening those trade routes when the time comes. Hey Greninja. Okay, pretty good little city here. Okay, we got to keep I'm these the people working. Person in the city. A lot of people need jobs. I got to get these guys to school and still have enough money to open my trade routes. Hey, shout out to Azure Shade. Good to see you, buddy.
Okay, I did it. Trade. Yes. Okay. So now... I gotta go to my overseer of commerce. And we're gonna export. That's the only thing I can export, but luckily it's worth a lot of money. Okay, so get some export going. Hopefully get some money. We'll speed things up a little bit. Oh, it says I'm in debt. give my salary to the city okay so you can see I'm starting to make some papyrus here and hopefully some traders will come through and buy it need to get some traders to come through Okay, I see a little bit of money coming in. Oh, it says disease is striking. Okay, we gotta slow it back down. Let's go to overlays. Health. Okay, who got diseased? Oh, these guys got diseased. They're going to need physician, apothecary, Okay, they should be good then.
Okay, I need to start importing bricks, but I don't have enough papyrus. Getting exported just yet. I'm trying to figure out where could I kick up some more work. Something like that. We're walking a tightrope here because money is the main issue. These are the traders right here. They'll exit. Our long and dangerous trek here was for nothing. The city won't trade. Why did he say the city won't trade? At least I have a good amount of money now. Why did he say the city won't trade? I've These been guys kicked out of my home and through no fault of my own. Our long and dangerous trek here was for nothing. The city won't trade. It says buy 600 Papyrus. I don't know. All is within yourself. Know your most inward self and look for what corresponds within nature. Ooh, Egyptian proverbs. Nice. Nice one as were. What I'm doing is beautifying the city. Our long and dangerous trek here was for nothing. The city won't trade.
Okay, I need to import bricks. Some of it's a little confusing. The new menus, like, don't make the most sense. A city full of ancient chaps, that's right. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, it says I have 800 bricks. Growth in consciousness doesn't depend on the will of intellect or its possibilities, but on the intense, on the intensity of the inner urge. Wow, that's deep. That's a little too deep. I'm gonna have to ponder that one. Okay, we got food we want for nothing. We got more food than we know what to do with. I wish I could sell some of it. bit of debt. Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again.
This is crazy because I imported the bricks. Like, what else am I waiting on? I have imported the bricks. Our long and dangerous trek here was for nothing. The city our long and dangerous trek here was for nothing. The city won't trade. I simply can't figure it out. Okay, there was a little tiny piece of road that was over here that I think was messing up and making it to where this place won't get workers. And I deleted that little piece of road because I noticed... Oh, there it is, you guys. There it is. That little tiny piece of road was preventing me from continuing because it wouldn't give workers to that storage place. And with no workers at the storage place, it's like it sees that I don't have the... Wow, that was so weird. Okay, we're gonna build our Mastaba. Right here. Apparently this is the end of the tutorial. So we have to finish Men Nefer's Mastaba. Balance imports and exports. Make sure we don't go broke. And we're gonna have to build this thing as well. Okay, now it's probably going to tell me workers needed at some point. Because I just built a ton of jobs. I don't know, we'll see. Usually fire is the big risk.
It says we can't get to the monument's staging area. Maybe that'll help because that they didn't used to have to do that. Wow. Now they need like special access. Okay, so there they go. They're going to start working now. You didn't used to have to put a road. To the access point. I don't know. That's weird. All my storage yards are full. And sometimes when your storage yards get full. There's nothing you can do aside from. Oops. Aside from just delete them. And then put them back in. You can only really do that if you have like a lot of money. But yeah, sometimes if your storage yards get really full, you just gotta whack them out and then start over. But I'm curious though. I can't tell if my exports are working. That's what's so weird. I can't tell if people have actually bought any of this stuff. We can start to put in some large statues. A little bit of beautification since we haven't done too much. Okay, here goes my brick pullers. They're actually pulling the bricks. And they're going to pull them right up. And then my brick layers are going to lay the bricks. So there we go. We're getting that mastaba started. I literally don't have enough storage. My storage is getting pretty full. It's because my industries aren't using as much as I'm used to them using.
Okay, we'll go 5x now and just let it run the city. We're making good money. Our people never starve. We don't have disease and disasters. So we're just going to let the city run its course. How did I get into debt? Okay, that's a little crazy. Oh, maybe because I bought bricks? Yeah, they probably plopped down some bricks over here and that's what cost me. What I can't understand is I'm supposed to be exporting papyrus. It feels like I'm not. collecting taxes from these run-down houses. It's hardly worth my time. Okay, I got money again, but I don't really know. Overseer of the Treasury. Import cost. Exports earn. My exports are earning because there's money right there. So that must be what it's coming from. Plus taxes. So at this point, we just wait for the Mastaba, which is 50% complete. And watch the money roll in. I turned down my exports or my imports on bricks. So that hopefully it balances my budget a little bit better. It might build the Mastaba a little bit slower though, but it should keep me from going into debt. Osiris is depicted as blue and he's also depicted as green, interestingly. I know, it says one person's watching even though I see like four of you in the chat. YouTube logic, I guess. Look, a storm's rolling through. Look, we got some clouds. That's kind of interesting. A city is requesting goods. So whenever that happens, we have to deliver them. And if we don't deliver them, we get in trouble. But luckily, I've got a stockpile of goods. My Mastaba is 62% complete. We're making enough money, I think that I can increase my, my bricks. Kingdom Standing Climbs, because I sent the beer that they requested just now. Because I'm playing on 5x speed, it's, uh, it's running through this stuff a little faster than it normally would. 
Okay, so here we have a problem. I don't have enough storage for my bricks. Oh, I got a gift from Pharaoh. Pharaoh sent me 2,000 bricks. I just gotta have a place to put them. I'm accepting your bricks. So there we go. We just got all the bricks from Pharaoh. That's gonna help us build that thing a lot faster. But sometimes if you don't have storage, it's no good. So you gotta make sure you have storage to accept his gift. Otherwise he might get mad if we can't accept his gift. 75% complete. Okay, that said I need to deliver chickpeas. Now, just want to make sure I'm not It said to deliver the chickpeas and it used to be that if you wanted to give chickpeas you had to have them in storage yards but storage yards default to not accepting chickpeas. They don't accept food, only your granaries accept food. But apparently I was able to send the chickpeas as requested even though I don't have them in storage yards which is kind of like a bug fix from the old version. Because in the old version you'd have to basically make a storage yard that can accept chickpeas and you'd also have to like know that they were going to request chickpeas from you in advance so it's kind of like you couldn't really beat the mission on the first try because it'd be hard to get those chickpeas and also the cool thing about this is it gives you the opportunity to deliver what they're asking for immediately without having to open your menus and that's good because I already have those things so I'll just deliver them you know But it, you used to have to get that message and then go open up the overseers and then go to your political and then, you know, give it. And if you didn't have it, then you'd open the menu for no reason. You know, it's like a whole thing. Okay, increase trading. Because you sent 700 papyrus as they requested, Nekin is now willing to trade even more papyrus. That'll make me more rich. Because every time they buy more papyrus, then I'm getting more richer. So that's good. I got a nice big city here. I got tons of money, so I could use it to expand my population, but I think at this point, I'm just gonna try and get this thing, you know, finished. So I'm trading these dudes more papyrus, my kingdom standing rose. I keep running into this issue where I don't have enough room to buy bricks and I keep having to delete storage and then build new storage because I don't have enough storage for all the bricks I need to buy this house is devolving did you guys see that just now it does not have access to physician or mortuary so that means that it's not getting access to physician like it needs I'm gonna let that slide though. The remainder of the Mistaba will require 1800 bricks. So we can see that's how much further we gotta go on my Mistaba. I'm about to order a lavish festival. Wait, it said something burned? Wait, what? No. I thought it said something burned. 
Okay, the mastaba is now complete. There we go. We finished the mastaba. And there we go. Another successful mission. Not bad, not bad at all. My kingdom rating was 72. 29 spacious apartments. Population of 2,700. Your boy had 6,000 debons in the bank, so I was, I was doing pretty good on that one. My next area is Timna. Do you guys want to take a break and keep playing, or or should we call it here? What do you guys think? If you guys are down to stream, I'm down to stream too. I'll just take a little break. Let me know what you guys think. Should we keep on rolling? Keep on rolling. I kind of want to keep playing. I, I feel bad because I'm going to spend like my whole day doing this. But what do you guys think? Should we Should we keep on rocking? I think it could be fun. It'd be nice to get a little bit ahead in the game. You know what I mean? It'd be nice to get like to a decent spot in the game to where we're getting close to working on pyramids because it really does take a while before you get to work on pyramids and that's kind of what I'm here to do. So what do you guys think? Should we just keep on trying to roll through the beginning? Azur says let's do it. Okay, let's take a little coffee break. I'm gonna go and make myself like a tea or something like that. Um, so let's just take a little quick break. We'll come back. We'll work on Timna. And um, let's just, you know, I gotta stand up for a second. And um, yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, you guys? All right.
Okay, you guys, that was a little long. I had to wait for my water to boil. I made a nice, tasty black tea. Okay, welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> I am Pharaoh Jono, and this is my reign. This is my reign. All right, make it so. Timna! An expedition to Sinai. We need to have a population of 2,000, no monuments. Prosperity rating of 15, but a very high kingdom rating of 70. All right. <clears throat> oh, yes, yeah, so you guys were enjoying the, the chair stream. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, had to get refreshed, had to pour a tea since I'm out of coffee. It's a PG Tips. Azur might know that brand. Okay, let us continue on the journey. Has taken the throne of Egypt. Pharaoh is deeply concerned as enemies have begun to threaten our borders and our nation lacks adequate supplies. Oh, enemies. Needed to create weapons with which to equip our troops. Pharaoh Den has ordered a mining expedition into the unforgiving land of Sinai, beyond our Sinai. and deep within Bedouin territory. The area known as Tim Timna is rich in gold. Oh, gold and copper. I know this one. I know this one. Stones, but it is otherwise barren. Conditions there will be harsh, and you'll need to import many amenities, perhaps even additional food and fine linen from Egypt. Hmm. Pharaoh will demand frequent shipments from Sinai and will ask you for money, copper, gemstones, and weapons. You can use any surplus of these items to help support the expedition. Be always on your guard, for the Bedouin of the this Sinai one's Desert tough. are formidable adversaries, and they will not willingly allow foreigners to occupy their land, let alone plunder their mineral wealth. To lighten the burden that such living conditions impose on your city's people, build a pavilion at some busy intersection. Citizens can relax at the pavilion's juggling and music stages. And if you also build a dance school, this new type of performance will provide great <clears throat> entertainment. My boys, the Egyptians, are over here inventing dance. Let's go. I'm about to rhythmic me move. <laughs> I'm about to express myself. <laughs> All right. About to invent dance. Yo, what we're about to invent is the military. Let's go. We need to conscript troops. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to conscript troops. Well, see, this is a long chain of events here, okay? We're going to mine copper and give the copper to the weaponsmith. The weaponsmith is going to make weapons out of the copper and deposit them at the fort. The fort is going to train a bunch of dudes with the weapons into military and they're going to go over there as trained military people after all of those things and I'm going to be able to use them to take on a whole bunch of baddies. So, okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and slow it down. I always slow it down. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so way over here, I even knew where it was. I even knew exactly where it was. Way over here, we have got our gold and copper ore. We're going to have to build a nice long road. Ah, blast. Okay, let's see how it does appear to be slightly different than all right first thing we got to do is lay out the gold mines As efficient as possible. Let's 
And the game hates when you do that. Without roads. It really does. Okay, gold mines gotta go where they gotta go. So we can get the maximum number of gold mines. And then after that, we can do copper. Need to do at least a couple of, a couple of copper mines. And then we're out. Okay. So we go boom, boom. Boom, boom. Not bad. Not bad. Now some poor souls are going to have to live over here. Oops. Because they can't get a water source, it's going to be a rough life for them. Sorry, guys. Gonna need some police to keep the riffraff in order. Okay, this is your most basic, like, tiny. No water, so no point to give them food. You know, think about it. Okay, and then we gotta make sure the whole place doesn't fall down. I'll do the same thing over here. Okay, this should be good. We gotta go see who's my patron god. Seth, we only got one god, the god of war, Seth. So we don't necessarily need to give these guys religion. <clears throat> and those temples are expensive. Okay, now the problem with having your gold all the way over there is they have to walk really far to deposit it. Like, really far. So the closest that I can get my... Because remember, our gold has to go to the village palace. And the closest we can get the village palace is right there, basically. I mean, if we could just do a straight line. Actually, we could. I think we could get the closest the village palace we could get is, like, here. All right. Yeah, this one's a toughy one. I think we're just gonna have to build big population. And we'll supplement these guys. No. Because the problem is getting them water It can be done, though. And then we toss them some entertainment. Oh, so close. The setup is like the hardest part. Because it's just like, ugh. <clears throat> I gotta build all these things. I'm already out of money. I have barely even got started. What? I have barely even started.
I don't even know how I'm producing food yet. Oh, hunting lodge. Those are easy. I guess what we'll do is run a road out this way. Run a road out this way. Add in a couple of greeneries. And some hunting lodges, because otherwise my peeps are going to starve. Okay. We're at employees needed. Okay, they are bringing gold. So it looks like my my town is functioning. I shouldn't go broke again. They're bringing gold. Okay. Pharaoh's requesting goods. Ugh. Okay, slow it down. Okay, slow it down. Oh, wow. This is rough. Okay, where's... Okay, military. We're gonna have, oh wow. They're just throwing me into it, aren't they? Okay. Okay, military. Fort, fort. Recruiter. Okay, recruiter. Now the forts are expensive. The forts are no joke. So we may have to stockpile money, you know. Azur's got the Azur's got the ancient Egyptian proverbs. Let's read them. Understanding develops by degrees. Mm, that's deep. That's very deep. Okay, the pharaoh is requesting copper. And I need to get it for him. Uh We need to get food, and then people will get better housing. I need to build a lot more population. If I'm going to spend the money on anything, it needs to be population. And I have no religion. That's bad. That's bad. Oh. Okay, I forgot to do... Religion. Ooh... Six months left to comply. Oh dear, I haven't complied with Pharaoh's request. Uh, Overseer of Commerce. I need to stockpile this resource. Because I may have accidentally been using it.
Okay, I need more people. That's one of my big issues here. All right. <laughs> I keep forgetting I have that on. I told you guys this is one of the hard ones. And I'm just going to have to like just put like a ridiculous amount of people in bad locations. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, so I gave, I was trying to figure out why don't I don't have workers. <clears throat> and then I gave priority to the workers, but now these two both have one, which I don't understand how they can both have one, but they just took it from somewhere else. Okay, I need to actually go, I need, so I started stockpiling copper. <clears throat> I fully staffed my copper mines there is a cloud going over plus that bird going over it's really funny oh i'm going at 0.5x i want to go at 1x okay i really got to pay attention to the speed okay we've almost got 400 copper boom there it is 400 copper and we gotta go okay apparently i hit that button and i complied and we're gonna send a modest gift as well and have i even built my personal mansion i don't think i built my personal mansion personal mansion I didn't even build it a minor blessing from Seth okay that reminds me I need to stop stockpiling overseer of commerce no more stockpiling okay Now we gotta do the overseer. It looks like I've got enough workers. This is one of those tough scenarios where they just put you in a tough spot, like right out of the gate. 
Okay, we have money coming in, and I really do have to build military buildings. Okay, Pharaoh's happy that I sent in the 400 copper. That's good, because I was worried that I might have been too late. Wow, these forts are sick. They look way different than they used to. Whoa. Okay, this is tight. Yo. Okay, the fort... The fort actually wasn't... Oh, God. I hate to do it, but you just, you need to build your forts, you know? That was a lot of money to just drop on that. So we've got an infantry fort, an archer's fort, and they support each other. So it's like, you gotta have your infantry and you gotta have your archers. So it's, it's tricky. This is why this is a tough mission too, because it's your first military mission and they're just throwing you into it. They're like, all right, have fun. <clears throat> okay. I was ha- I don't know what this is right here. I think this might be unemployment. And I'm trying to figure out if I was gonna do jobs, where would I do them? And I think what I'll do is I'll put them over here. So we're gonna make a few Play pits. Gonna make a few potters. Gonna make some storage yards. The question is, what are we doing with this road? Because this road is just not looking right. Okay, we got to comply with Pharaoh's request for copper. That means we start stockpiling copper. Pharaoh's requesting a lot of copper. And I'm doing okay on money. So what I'm going to do is turn one of these gold mines into a copper mine. Because the gold and the copper mines can both go in the same place. The other thing I need to make is... Um, I don't have any jewel. Ah, I done gone into debt. Okay, we'll see how that works out. I got Brewer and I got Potter. They haven't given me Jeweler. I'm going to have to go to the world map and see who wants to buy what. Buys Copper. Doesn't buy anything. Buys Papyrus, which I don't believe I can sell. Is this the whole map? This is everybody? Okay. Yeah, Azura, this is just like the throwback Thursday. We'll strike down the next enemies who dare to violate your city. We will get violated. Our city is going to face violation. So, yeah, it's good that Seth has got us a blessing so that next one who does it they're about to get blasted down and we're gonna keep on ordering the festivals I'm trying to I'm trying to keep from going broke you can see we're starting to get some fighters in here
Okay, I delivered the the Pharaoh's request. Which means we don't need to stockpile copper anymore. We can use copper. I gotta watch my money go up a little bit, otherwise. Here, let's do overlays and we'll just check for any risks. Okay, we'll try and get these guys. I don't want to have an outbreak. No crime. <clears throat> Nobody's about to collapse. And I'm not seeing fire risk. Okay, we gotta go to the world map. I'm gonna have to import some things. I might have to import beer. But I might be able to sell my excess copper. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> okay, kingdom rating has risen. That's good. That's good. We got gold on the way in, so that's always a good sign. You love to see it. Looks like I got plenty of workers. In fact, I need to actually give them some jobs. But I can't really produce that much. That's the weird thing. We got brewers, but I don't know how I'm supposed to get any barley. The only food and farming I have is Hunting Lodge. I can make gemstones, but I can't turn them into luxury goods, which I could, which I would be able to sell. So I'm gonna have to import beer if I want a bigger population. Which I don't know if I want to import beer. Okay, I guess we can import the beer. And then... Well, one thing I probably should do is put in tax collectors. What am I thinking? I haven't really done tax collectors. Oh, I'm getting my taxes from these poor people. <clears throat> you can bet on that. Okay. He wants 1,500 copper. That is a lot of copper. So we're going to have to go stockpile. Stockpile. And what we're going to have to do is get a few more copper mines. Because that is a huge request. What do we got? Gold, gold. Turn you both into copper. The good thing is I can sell copper. So once we stockpile it and get some stockpiles and send it to the pharaoh, then we can sell so I don't necessarily have to turn those back into gold mines. <clears throat> I 
I know, this is as close as we'll get to Jono After Dark. If I could stay up late enough to do a Jono After Dark, I would do one. <clears throat> I totally would. Okay, so we are importing some beer. I'm actually kind of low on funds. I gotta stop spending. I don't know what we're gonna do with these um with these gemstones. That's what I can't figure out. I wonder if I can put a copper mine. No, I can't. Okay, so I don't know. It says arm. It says equip 15 soldiers with shields. How do I do that? Produce some hides. Oh, Bedouin army attacks in 12 months. Oh dear. I've got 1,200 out of the 1,500 copper. I'm going to be able to send that. Bedouin army attacks me in 12 months. We just got notified we're about to get attacked. We just got put on blast. I'm not sure how to produce hides. It says produce hides. These guys will upgrade when they get a courthouse. I think if I just toss a road right there, that should work. Now, the thing is, courthouse is as high as they're going to go. Because I I don't I don't want to import the papyrus to make scrolls. Man, know yourself, and you shalt know the gods. The Egyptian proverbs. Good one, Azur. Okay, let's go see if we can fulfill... Okay, I need to fulfill Pharaoh's request. Gone and done it. That means that we can turn off stockpiling. And we can go to... Ooh, open trade route to export. Weapons. Buys papyrus. It says open trade route to export, but I don't see anywhere that I can export it to. I'm Timna. It says I can export jewelry. Maybe it'll be later, because I don't know. Well, copper is exportable, so let's export when we're over. Let's do over 800 so I have a good stockpile. If it, or I'll do a thousand in case Pharaoh calls on me and wants some, I'll already have some stockpiled. 
so we'll just let some pile up. Okay, these guys all got pretty much upgraded. I could build a couple of schools and then import a little bit of papyrus. Who's got it for me? I don't know. Can I even import papyrus? See, I swear there's like stuff that's missing. There's like cities that are missing or something because it says I can import, but I can't. It's not there. It's weirding me out. I don't know. I'm still about to get attacked by these people. I have pretty good money, so I think I'm going to get another fort put together. Okay, my kingdom standing has risen. Because I'm about to get attacked, and even though Seth said he would strike him down, I'm not trying to risk it. Alright, now... Oh, wait, is there more gold up here? Oh, dude, there's more gold up here. New trade rate av route available. Okay, I don't know exactly how these guys are going to get workers. I'll probably have to do something like that. There we go. Six months until these dudes reach me. I got 900 copper, so that's working out nice. Oh, I haven't built my... Man, I keep forgetting to build my personal mansion. I just don't know where I want to build it. Oh no, debt. Okay, hopefully these gold mines <clears throat> help out. Okay, I still haven't I still haven't built my personal mansion, which means I'm not drawing my salary. I think I'm going to have to get rid of those guys. There's my personal mansion. It's been a long time since I played this game and I keep on forgetting to do things like my mansion, like basic stuff. So that's kind of bad. Okay, we gotta 
Anywhere I can build a gold mine. Gotta do it. I may have to give them a little bit of people right next to them as well. I don't know if they'll get workers or if they won't. I don't know. Maybe they will. Oops. Maybe I won't need these. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Okay, it said I could open up a new trade route. Papyrus. And they buy gems and jewelry. Yes, good. Okay, now let's go... Gems are finally exportable. Copper is supposed to be exporting. Oh yes, weapons, finally. Okay, we'll start making money after this. Okay, the army's gonna reach me in one month and that's, that's kind of serious. I think it says that I have like a lot of unemployed people. I'm not sure. I'm still having a hard time reading my, my worker overseer. I think this is my unemployed people. I think this is my total workforce. I'm not sure. Yeah, when I played this last Azure, yeah, June 2021. So that was the old version. Okay, Seth remembers his promise to protect you and is delighted to slay those who were foolish enough to threaten your city. And there's an image of Seth. The enemy's on our territory. It's time to battle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is all new. Hold on, do I just hit continue? Player losses, one archer. Enemy losses, two infantries, four archers. You defeated the invaders. Timna is safe for now. Rebuild your army as soon as possible. Okay, th that was way different. That was way, way different. That was so different. Archers are only equipped with simple bows. Produce composite bows from wood. They haven't given me this whole shields thing yet. They haven't, that's like some advanced stuff. Okay, we're starting to get some money rolling in. So we can do some lavish things like build gardens. Oh yeah, I wanted to import papyrus to maintain 200, I don't need much. Okay, beer. You know, the 400 beer has been working, honestly. Apparently, we can export clay.
We can export the gems. All right. We'll do good on money because we can export a lot of stuff. Bedouin army will attack in nine months. All right. That means it's time to hold a grand festival. What's it say? Warning. Need 500 beer to hold the grand festival. Blast. Okay, let's go see how Seth feels about me. He's congenial. He's got plenty of blessings. I need to get those blessings. So we're going to go build some shrines to my boy Seth. I don't know if that's the best spot. Yes! Seth approves of your fear and obedience and will strike down the next enemies who dare to violate your, your lands. Alright, the people need some religion. And they also need the magistrate of a courthouse. Okay, who's importing my papyrus? Oh, here we go. This guy has papyrus right here. Okay, lavish festival. Let's keep them coming. Okay, so we got plenty of gold workers over here. I didn't have to create a second slum because they can they can make the trek over here far enough. There's too little entertainment to be found in the location. Okay, I'm finally gonna build my first pavilion. That's my very first pavilion. They're trying to wage war in six months. You know, the dancer school is so big. It's just really hard to find a place to actually put it. Like, it's so big. Okay, we'll build another pavilion. Because I do need to fill up some jobs. Yeah, see, now I'm down to 35 unemployed. Because I built a bunch of jobs. Okay, that's good. That's a little bit better. Give these guys some entertainment. You know, they're getting enough food over here that I may as well build them a bazaar. Because I don't know if these guys are getting water access or what. But they... I guess... We'll take care of them if they're getting food. I don't see how they're getting food all the way down here and water. Like normal in the old game, these could never upgrade because they're far from water. But it looks like the water carrier. No, that's a fire marshal. Well, anyway, it seems to be working out. Okay, we got rich all of a sudden, which means it's time to deck the city with all the best. Okay, my houses are getting upgraded. What they're gonna need next is access to a dentist, which I don't even have. I thought they were gonna say luxury goods, but no, they're reliant on the dentist. Well, at least a lot of my houses are upgrading, that's nice. And yeah, we just got rich, so I'm gonna make some nice gardens. That'll be good.
Okay, I've already got the amount of copper that Pharaoh wanted in my stockpiles. So that was good. I was able to just send him that. We're not stockpiling the resource. Pharaoh asked for that copper and I was like, here you go. All right, we got plenty of money. Festival Square, Shrine. May want to build some shrines just to, just to kind of be pious. Ooh, one month until we get attacked. The, Seth says he's gonna strike him down. So, be with me, Seth. He says he's gonna strike him down. I'm gonna need ya. Don't fail me now, gods. Okay, let's make sure we rock the festival. Okay, I am actually gonna increase the amount of beer that I'm importing because we are rich beyond our wildest belief. So we can go ahead and increase the beer import. Uh, got beer. Oh, Seth remembers his promise and is delighted to slay those who were foolish enough to threaten your city. We're more popular. Kingdom standing has risen. Okay, enemy in our territory. It's time to fight. This is interesting. So this is my army here. I'm going to let this play out. I got to see what happens here. Bedouins, Timna, and see we both have like health. So in the old game, I would have to walk my military all the way from their barracks to wherever the enemy entered on the point of the map that they entered and that would that would always be the same place so once you knew where they're going to enter you could just put your army close to there and then just take your guys over there but in this case they're like no we'll just make a little special battle for you here's your little special battle I mean, nothing. It shows all this stuff over here. There's all this health bar, but none of it moves. I wonder if this was like supposed to have more to it and it just never got fully. I don't know. Okay, so I lost two infantry. They lost seven archers and three infantry. I mean, that's interesting the way that they're doing it now. It's not like I dislike it, but it's not like really a, a battle now. Okay, we're rich beyond our wildest imagination, so now we can do whatever we want with the money. 
It's interesting to give me breweries, but I haven't found any way to get... I haven't found any way to get, um... What do you call it? Barley. I can export barley, but I can't produce it. And... I can make a brewer, but I can't get any barley. It's just weird. Well, okay, one, one way that I should spend up all the money is, um... Building the rest of my barracks. Okay, I maxed out my barracks. You can max out your barracks, and there we go. We did it. So that's all my barracks. Dude, I don't know how they're getting water all the way over here, but more power to them. Seth says he's about to strike down my enemies, so thank you, Seth. Appreciate that very much. I'm giving these guys the upgrade treatment. Let me up, let me upgrade, yeah. Give these guys some uh, parks since they literally have nothing going on. My houses will not upgrade because they don't have access to a dentist and they're not going to give me a dentist. Okay, what is the requirement? What are the objectives here? Population of 2,000. They do better. Kingdom rating of 70. Okay. Kingdom rating. Kingdom rating. Where's this? See, where? Where is this? Kingdom rating. Oh, here. Kingdom seventy needed. Your inability to provide annual tribute, dude. I'm rich. How come I haven't been providing tribute? Hang on. We'll get this fixed right away. Uh. Dang, I'm so bad at this. I'm still learning the menus. Okay, I have a savings of 102 from my Royal Scholar salary of five per month. That's what I get when I build my um, when I build my uh, personal mansion. So we're gonna send off a gift, a generous gift of an educated monkey. Okay, we dispatched it and a modest gift. Okay, I dispatched it as well. So now you can see my savings went down. Okay. Now let's go see what's my kingdom rating now. Oh, 71. 71. There we go. Oh, but my population is not 2,000. Oh, I need a, I need a population boom now. All right, we need a population boom, and we need it stat. All right, if it's population you need... And it's population that you'll get. Uh. All right, population boom coming right up. Gonna need fire, architect, police, uh, seven months to get attacked. We just got put on blast. Gonna need tax collector for these guys. Gonna need water services. Nice little bazaar. We're about to hit 2,000.
Okay, I don't know. There should be immigrants flooding in from one end of the road. I don't see them. I don't know why they're not populating this housing block. My population is stagnant at 1995. They should... I don't know why they're not. That's so weird. There's no roadblock. Everybody's getting their jobs. Hmm. That is so strange. <clears throat> well, I wanted a population boom. Maybe I can get it by adding a school over here. Because these guys look like they're ready for a school. I just need five more people to show up and I think we complete this request. Okay, these guys just all downgraded. Because they're not getting access to water. Meanwhile, I have all of these houses over here. Here's the, here's the new people coming in. This is what I was expecting. But they're not coming in for these houses. Okay, it's time to battle. This is my huge army. I lost two archers. They lost 17. <clears throat> I don't know what is going on with these houses. They're just totally empty. Okay, my population's 1999. Come on. 2000. There we go. There we go. Okay, we finished that one. That was a that was a tough one. Okay, they're going to give me two choices here now. They finally opened it up to Whichever one you want to do. Population 2500. Three Mastabas. Or. One Mastaba. Population 2500. Pharaoh's Navy. This one's Pharaoh's Navy. This one is the challenge of the sea. I don't like the military ones. I like building the Mistabas. So let's do the challenge of the sea because I really don't like the military ones. Those are the ones that I'm like, wow, this is hard. Because you have to have so much money to get your military going, which in that last scenario, they did give us a lot of money. 
But some of the other scenarios, they don't give you the most. Do, the burial place of our forefathers has grown over the years into a sprawling necropolis of sacred tombs. Now, most noble men and women wish to make this their eternal resting place. To honor them, the new pharaoh, Kazakimwe of the Second Dynasty, has ordered the construction of three sacred mastaba tombs, one of greater size than the other two, for the local nobility. Pharaoh has also ordered the creation of a powerful navy based at Bedet. Abjadu, too, must support a modest fleet of combat ships if our shores are to remain totally secure. This will not be, and our climate supports only a few sparse areas of forest. Cedar may be imported at great cost from Byblos in the land of Lebanon to the northeast. Fortunately, exports of our native papyrus will provide a means of offsetting this expense. Okay. <clears throat> so I am going to have to... Ooh, look. Crocodile! Okay, I remember this one. I remember this one. First off, they give you a crooked road. But I'm not gonna let them play me like that. All right, we can produce brickworks, weaver, Brewery, Potter, Papyrus Maker, Reed Gatherer, and Shipwright. Okay, so we're going to have a Wharf District. There we go. Okay, we're going to need a nice big population. What am I doing? 
it is such a chore to get everything set up like right out of the gate especially when they have too many trade routes to choose from okay this guy buys fish so we're gonna buy fish well we'll we'll overproduce fish so we can sell it Okay, it says I have a floodplain, but I'm not producing anything yet, so that's kind of an issue. Non-food farms is all I've got. I remember this one. Mmm, I remember this one. There's only like a few good plots. Of farmland, like barely any. Okay, this is... This is tough. gotta make it so hard.
I am about to get low on money. So I'm in kind of a tight spot because I'm going to be low on money. I'm not really producing like a number of things. All right. Get some production going. It's hard in the beginning because it takes like all your focus. It's 
So we can export flax and linen, so that's good. We can export papyrus. That's great. This guy buys beer, <clears throat> which I do need to build some breweries, I just realized. station there. Okay, somebody got sick. Looks like my guys managed to get sick. I might have forgot to build apothecaries. It's entirely possible. Having some slight desirability issues, plus we got ourselves into a plague.
think I need a lot more workers. Okay, we got a stockpile beer so we can comply. Okay, we're stockpiling beer until we can comply. Okay, we got a little bit of food. I just realized I need wood. Who is selling the wood? Hang on, who's selling the wood? Oh, Biblos. They did say Biblos. Oh, I can't because I'm out of money. Okay, well they said that I could make money. Let's see. They said that I could make money selling the papyrus, so I should probably try and do that. Gonna move some workers around, see if we can get money flowing. I forget who's taking the papyrus, who's buying the papyrus. I've got Timna buying papyrus land route. Okay, that's good, land route. I need land route. And somebody better buy this beer too. Okay, my debt's going down a little bit. I don't understand how these guys got a boat when... When my shipwright had no wood, I got no wood. Somehow I got a boat, fishing boat. Don't know. That one's a mystery to me. Okay, I gave my industry workers full working capacity. 
Hopefully it doesn't cause a disaster. Religion and hygiene are both suffering and that's not good. Don't have enough Debbins to hold a festival. Oh dear. Oh, there's a crocodile on the streets. What are you doing, crocodile? Don't eat my people, please. Leave them alone. Oh no, he's about to eat the tax collector. Oh God, he ate the tax collector. He ate him. There was nothing I could do to help him. I'm about to deliver the beer. There we go. We delivered the beer. That's good. Do I have poppers somewhere? Oh no, I don't. I never built any potters. Okay, we never built any potters. Oh, because I don't have any clay. I Am I going to have to import clay? Let's see if I can import clay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to import. I don't want a lot though. Apparently I can export bricks, so I need to start making bricks. I got a few more yes answers on my poll. Most people say they haven't ever played this game or the original, but a, a few people did say yes, so that's kind of cool. I'm hoping a few people stop by because the game is new and they wanted to see, you know, somebody streaming it. Okay, I really need for my debt to go down. I don't know. I think I might have to do some more production. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess. So I am tragically low on employees and I've been having a hard time getting more people to come to my city because I don't have any pottery.
Okay, I need to export bricks. Oh, but I can't. Oh, I can. Yeah, export those bricks. I can just sell those bricks I just got. My money is starting to get right, but my kingdom standing is going to get bad. Because I need to pay my tribute. Oh, I finally got money. Nice. Because I've really been wanting to put some gardens in. I think it would upgrade these guys' house pretty quick. Ah, oh, there goes my money. There, I can undo that. At least we upgraded some of the houses. Okay, so we should have a decent thing going here. Apparently, I need to lay my mastabas as well. And they apparently need to have road access. But I don't have enough workers to actually start working on them yet. But we're almost there. Now that I got a little population boom going, we're almost there. And I've got money coming in. So that's good. All right, you know what? If I have to go into debt to beautify my city, then so be it, because we about to get some, uh, we about to get some beautification in here. Let's go. I could probably produce a lot more fish. If I played my cards right.
It would be costly, but could be done. All right, now that's what we need. Because I heard I can sell that fish. My map told me. Fish, exportable. Export went over zero. And then what we'll do is we'll make a couple of storage yards and we'll allow them to accept fish. Okay. They're going to accept nothing but fish. So those ones, I'll sell my fish. It's the same music though. It took me so long to realize it's the same music. Okay, there they go. Everything's looking good aside from my money is a little bit low. Once we actually get some money stockpiled back up, I can open up those extra trade routes. Okay, there we go. Trade routes coming right up. Okay, we're going to deliver that beer. Just like they asked for. There's a big old cloud going over.
All right, so I'm starting to get some bricks. I could use more. Okay, I'm going to start making my own bricks. I just got to figure out where I want to do it. These guys have got so much beer. How come they're not being served beer? That's what's weird. I feel like I actually need like extra bazaars. I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out what they want half the time. Okay, well at least we have like gone completely rich. It says not enough entertainment to be found. I think I'm gonna have to finally get my first dance in school. Where to put it? That'll do. Okay, these guys are waiting for bricks. I want to see if we can get them some. It's supposed to be importing straw. Right now I'm telling these storage yards, I'm going to tell you to get straw, and I'm going to tell you to get clay, because I want this one to have straw, I want this one to have clay, and I want my brickworks to start actually working. And I want the straw and the clay to be right next to them. Sometimes you gotta tell them to accept nothing. So you can just tell them to get the one thing you want them to get so they only focus on that. Now I just had some crime. Contaminated water. Okay, we got a little bit of crime. 
Watch out. Got a little bit of crime in the city. Never thought I'd see the day. It's time to crack down. Still not really seeing any bricks yet. These guys just started working on them, so it's going to take them a minute. Looks like I'm doing good on jobs. <laughs> Throw the criminals in an oubliette. See how they like that. Off to the guillotine. I'm a kind pharaoh, but I have no tolerance for thieves. Okay, now I know we had some health issues. My population's pretty good. My ratings are doing pretty good. I'm over my target population, so what I really need to do is build these dang mastabas. So we're going to start to import bricks. Okay, we're going to import bricks because we got to get these things built. It says it needs to have a supply of beer. But I'm like, dude, how come you haven't bought beer? We have beer. Am I stockpiling? Oh no, I'm stockpiling. Ah. See how fast it upgraded my houses? I was stockpiling. Okay, I am making like an insane amount of money. So I think I'll... I think what I'll do is... I'm going 
gonna expand my pyramid workforce. Oh my goodness, I didn't even build forts this whole time. What the? I didn't even build forts. Okay, hang on, hang on, this is bad. Okay, so this is the benefit of being rich. Watch me just build an army. Okay, now we might need to import the weapons. But we're making enough money to where we can afford it, so that's fine. And what I might want to do is make some more weavers. Because it looks like we're getting a little bit full on flax. And then how are we doing for jobs? Jobs is good. Jobs is good. Very good. Perfect flood expected. No workers live nearby. Oh, did I finally reach the end of where my workers can get to? No workers live nearby. Might have to throw some workers in here for them. Let's go see if my shipwright is actually building a ship finally. It is not. Let's see if my shipwright ever gets some wood. Oh, 200 units of wood. Oh, production. There we go. Production. Let's see what it produces. The shipwright is building a ship, which it hasn't done the whole time. So I don't know how I got boats for fishing boats. All right, that is a warship right there. Okay, we got a warship. That's good. I mean, we did not have an army. Oh my goodness, rough waters threaten to tear trading ships apart. Could be months before the winds calm down and merchants dare to risk it. Okay, this is a transport ship, I believe. We're as dangerous as a crocodile, ready to attack our invaders when they were as dangerous as a crocodile, ready to attack our invaders when they arrive. 
Okay, my stab is coming along. Brickworks making the bricks. Okay, these guys are going to start recruiting my army. Look, this guy's doing sit-ups in here. <laughs> Look at this guy doing his, like, frantic sit-ups. Yes. Okay, these guys are going to... They got one unit stored of weapons, so that's good. He's producing units. Training up my units. Okay, how is disease going to strike? Who got diseased? Oh, it's going to be these guys. Dang it. Okay, it says wages have increased throughout the kingdom. So we got to go to the overseer of the treasury. And we got to outpay the kingdom. Okay, we're making a lot of money, so we can lower taxes too. Taxes low, wages high. We're going to be getting a lot of people coming to visit. Okay, how did I know? These guys were going to get sick. <laughs> going to have to give these guys a well. Uh, cool, they're giving me bricks. To help me build my mastaba. Every once in a while, there's a house that's not getting food from the bazaar. All right, well, we are just rocking and rolling here. We got an army to defend ourselves. Picking up plenty of food.
Okay, my city is going good. They cannot build these mustabas fast enough. City's going good. Just waiting for him to build these mustabas. My kingdom rating is 97. Wow. Yep, just gotta build up these mustabas. I am about to get hungry. Gonna have to eat. I made my patron god angry. I made my patron god very angry. He's better now. I made him real mad. I totally forgot about the gods. This one's 75% complete. Wow, that one's 75% too. And that one's 75%, huh? I guess they're just going equally. It's weird how the old game had a map and this game has no map. It just weirds me out like so much. Like what happened to the map? Because I would totally use it. Population almost 3,000.
Mastabas are almost complete. Okay, that's an interesting one. <clears throat> Need to deliver fish. Okay, we're gonna stockpile fish. Okay, we gotta try and send this fish out. Twenty one hundred fish. Each one of these blocks is four hundred, so four hundred, eight hundred, twelve hundred. Still need like double that. Oh, looks like I have some unemployment. Okay, we've complied with the request so we can stop stockpiling fish. And I don't need this one grabbing fish anymore. My Mastaba is almost complete. I'm not sure why it's not getting workers. But it says everything's going fine. Are we having issues getting bricks? I don't know. Okay, here come the bricks through town. They're just taking a long route. My population is back over 3,000. People saying they're not getting food from the bazaar, but I see bazaars everywhere. Okay, another Mastaba finished. Okay, we fed the bellies of Nubt during a famine, and we have become more popular by our fellow Egyptians. That's raising my kingdom standing. Making my, making my family grow into a great pharaoh family one day. <clears throat> okay, 87% complete. We got two complete mistabas. 11,000 bricks, apparently. My money's a little tight. Gotta say, the money's a little tight. My city has been doing well.
Got to see those bricks come in. Oh, accepting 2,000 bricks. Let's go. Okay, good. Yeah, whenever they send bricks, that's handy because that's money I don't have to spend on bricks. Okay, Mustafa finished. That was the last load right there. And we have achieved victory. Let's go. All right, population of 3,211. Kingdom rating of 100. Prosperity rating of 53. Culture rating of 35. Nice. All right, well, I'm going to save it here. You guys can go eat. So next we'll have the choice between Abu or the Selma Oasis. No monuments on the Selma Oasis. No monuments on Abu. So it looks like we might have maybe some, some fighting going on. Not sure, but we'll see. But I'm just going to head on back here. Um, I don't know. Do I have to save it? Does it auto save? Feels like it saves. If I want to come back in anyway I'm done you guys this was a long stream I really wanted to get some time in on this game and play through and uh, we did that so there we go nice little weekend stream I might try to do the same thing tomorrow we'll see okay I'm gonna exit and see what happens all right everybody I'm out of here hope you guys enjoyed the stream I'll catch you next time thanks everybody good night peace